Welcome to this month's Heath Highlight, where we are here with Heather Wright from Wright Architecture. She and her sister Megan started it six years ago, although they've both been in architecture for about 20 years. And the reason we're here with her today is because we are going to talk about sustainable, resilient, eco-friendly, passive architecture and how that's great when you build, when you remodel, and for your health. All right, and here's Heather. And one of the things that we, when we were talking about building, and I know that you guys focus on sustainable architecture, but the mm -hmm. first thing that I know that you taught me about building sustainably was about building small. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it's quite simple, right? Build small, build it better. You know, I, I think we all would appreciate a small unit that's built really well to a huge sprawling thing that, has no definition or no like, you know, reason to use a certain space. So I would rather put my energy and my budget and our, our, you know, we recommend this to our clients as well into something that's really meaningful. Every, every corner is used. And that doesn't mean like too tight, but there's a balance, right? And I think what you're doing here is perfect because it gives the, op like the ultimate flexibility for the property, for the use, for you. And you're also creating a really beautiful space where there was none before. So when we talked about starting building this ADU, the second thing that you brought up to me was how do we minimize the amount of energy that the house uses? Can you walk through what a couple of those things were that we talked about? Absolutely. So first you're gonna look to minimize the use of energy. This is long-term use of energy as you're running the building. Um, and there are there is a little bit of an upfront cost to this, but over time you're reducing the the fee to keep the house, you know, in motion. And so you're going to recoup that. Um, so the first thing is we try to um, situate the house on the site, if at all possible, to maximize um, the sun's energy when we need it mm. and block it out when we don't. You know, sometimes on a tight site like we have here, we're really looking at the orientation. You know, the building kind of has to be where it is. Um, we're looking at the orientation to shape where our windows are, where the openings yeah. are. And so you maximize, the, the rule of thumb is to maximize the glass to the south and minimize it to the west. There's a lot more complexity to that, to it no, than that. No, that's great. But yeah, that's yeah. kind of the basic. Um, the next thing you can do is to really insulate and super seal the building. And this is something that's become gonna become common practice. Over so no time. more pink panther insulation? No, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's also um, fiberglass, yeah, so it's not, not, a fun, not a fun material to interact with. I mean, you certainly, that is, fiberglass is a well-insulating material, but there are many other ways you can do it these days. Well, but not a very eco-friendly as well, right? Right. Um, there are materials that have a higher resistance to the, sun, to the heat value at, than fiberglass. Um, you can blow in cellulose. You can um, have rock wool, which is a... a like a wool rock product. They've taken rock and, and spun it out into fibers and made it this like stiff resistance. So that's, a, <laughs> that's another um, potential alternative to um, fiberglass. And then you'd also mentioned something about like low embodied energy products. Yeah, so that's something where you're looking at all of the pieces and parts that go into the building. You're trying to reduce how much energy it took to create those. Mm. Um, and that includes how far you shipped it from. You know, like we want to reduce shipping things from across the world if at all possible, which I know is kind of a hard challenge in today's market. So like when we use Heath Tile in the ADU, which is made right down here, very low embodied energy, right? Exactly, especially right. if you carry it here yourself. But yeah, you're looking at the aggregate of all of those things to reduce how much energy goes into a building. And that also includes how much it takes to, how much energy it takes to recycle and reuse a material after it's been in use on your building. Mm. Um, and then what about putting solar on the houses and houses being all electric? Isn't it the case that California will be requiring all new houses to have zero gas and all electric by a certain date? Yeah, and that we believe that's coming out in the next code cycle. Okay. Um, so the next When's few that? years. Next couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's you know we're gonna have to let go of our gas fireplaces. We're gonna have to let go of our gas um, ranges, which is a really hard challenge. And I know it takes a lot of people a lot of energy to get over th that vision of cooking on gas, right? But we've also seen health reports come out about the health of the the gas, the off gassing from a gas range, and 
you know, we, we're conscious of our health as well. And so I think that helps the conversation. Well, and I think that leads to like a very practical application of building what we're calling sustainably, but also we want to build for resilience as well, right? Mm -hmm. And that's resilience of our health and our human being as well, right? And they have shown studies that having gas stoves has an off gas that's actually not good for us. Can you talk about like what other things in terms of building more sustainably and eco-friendly is actually better for our health as well? Yeah, I mean, all of those materials that you're putting into the house, you want those to be things that you don't feel uncomfortable being in contact with and that aren't, you know, don't have a noxious smell or, you know, put off something over time that's really not going to be good for you. I mean, I... so that's like the low VOC paint and right. Yeah, low VOC paint as natural of, of materials as possible. And that dovetails with the embodied energy as well, because mm -hmm. you know the less refined a material is, the more natural it's gonna be, and the less energy it's gonna take to create. It's not unlike moving towards eating food that's more natural and sure. less processed. Sure. So we want our environment to be that way as well. Well, that's like, I know I had a client that was allergic to MDF, mm. which is what a lot of cabinets are made out of right? Is that compressed material that has lots of chemicals in it. Yeah. So obviously having your cabinets made out of real wood instead of MDF would be something that would probably be more low embodied energy, mm -hmm. would also have better resilience and be better for the air that you breathe in your own home every single day, right? Yep. Yeah. And if it's even better if that wood can be locally sourced or sure. close to locally sourced, sure. like the Pacific Northwest um, or a place where they're doing responsible forestry habits um, for long-term sustainability. So knowing where things come from, and I know it's a lot of energy to, to think about all those things, but wouldn't you rather put that energy in up front yourself, have a great place where you're living that feels good over time, is resilient to the elements, is you know increasing the value of the place you live as well as the enjoyment of living there. Well, and I think that's kind of like my last point here is like people are always asking money. And most people think if you build more environmentally friendly or sustainable, that it's like they all they see is dollar signs and like, I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. So number one, talk about like, is it affordable to build sustainably? And then I will tell you as a real estate agent that what we're seeing more and more is people that do take the chances on building more sustainably, putting in solar, doing all of the eco-friendly things, mm -hmm. people are actually having a greater appreciation for when those people go to sell and someone goes to buy. So we are seeing the return on investment yeah. there. But tell us, is it more expensive to build sustainably? It can be. I mean, building small is innately less expensive. True. So there's that. <laughs> um, insulating, reduce, and sealing. Um, you know, sealing all those joints where air leakage happens is gonna make you know your your bills over time much less than they would be otherwise even though that type of insulation may be slightly more expensive now right you're paying to install a, another layer of insulation on your house um, or have a slightly more expensive detail but in that i think the ultimate end result is that you end up saving money you just have to wait for it um, and i think that can be conveyed even if you don't stay in your home for the rest of your life and you do sell it. Well, that's where it turns into your resale right. value, right? right? And it helps with your resale. Right. When it's over 100 degrees outside and a buyer comes along and goes, oh, this house is going to be comfortable in that weather yeah. without using the air conditioning. Right. There's value there. Right. Yeah. So what you guys probably don't know yet is that Heather and her sister Megan are the ones that are helping me build the ADU at B Street. So number one, it's small. Number two, I was very focused on choosing them because I knew they were very focused on sustainability, which is really important to me. Number three, yes, I'm going to keep it as a rental, but you know what? We never know where things are gonna go if we have to sell. And so I was really focused on how this all will turn around if I do have to sell. So there you have it. Build small, build responsibly, be resilient, great return on investment.